Today, I'm excited to talk about one of my favorite new tools. This is something I've been using for the last three months, and it's made a tangible impact on my data science work and on the content that I create. Now you're probably wondering, what is this magical tool? Well, it is WSL2. And according to this poll that I ran about a month ago, the vast majority of you are unfamiliar with it. WSL2 is short for Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. And honestly, when HP and Microsoft reached out to me to sponsor a video related to this, I just about jumped out of my chair because I was so amped to spread awareness on uh, this specific toolkit. As many of you know, I use Windows for all of my content creation and I use Linux with Ubuntu for the majority of my data science work. What WSL2 lets me do is use both operating systems on the same computer without having to dual boot. As a Windows user, you get access to everything that Linux gives, like um, amazing open source tools, etc. And as a Linux user, you get access to all of your favorite Windows tools and you can use them simultaneously and fully integrated together. Also, it's free. I know I'll be getting questions about that in the comments. Now, to a lot of people, this might not seem like a big deal. You might say, why don't you just use dual boot or have two computers, one running Linux and one running Windows or have a cloud instance or something like that. So WSO2 lets you access the same file system from both Windows and Linux. To me, this is a massive deal. If I'm making a tutorial, say with NVIDIA's Rapids that only works on Linux, I can do the coding, record the screen, edit the video, do all of this stuff without switching between computers and turning them off and on like you would in a dual boot. I had to do this quite a bit in the past. This also opens up a huge suite of tools for you to use. For example, if you wanted to explore data using one of the most popular BI tools out there, you wouldn't have to go and figure out how to configure it on Linux. You could just use it on Windows. This makes your work and your options significantly more flexible. If you happen to be a casual video gamer that prefers the Linux command line for most of their work, this also opens up this new world to you. Let's say I like gaming. I have an awesome gaming PC at my house with a great graphics card. I don't have to dual boot anymore to use my Windows games and do Linux tooling like um, or my, let's say, training my AI model. I can just use them both at the same time. This change isn't just good for you if you're on a home computer. Honestly, the biggest benefit I see here is for your work. The majority of companies use Windows for most of their computers. And according to the Kaggle Machine Learning and Data Science Survey, most data scientists still prefer to do their work locally. If you're working on Windows and had solutions that were put into production in Linux, before you had to do all of your testing in some sort of cloud or virtual environment. Now you can essentially test everything offline locally if you wanted to. WSL2 is also great for companies. Many of them like the security and standardization associated with Windows. For companies, knowing that the Linux environment falls under similar protections allows data scientists to use these tools without major red flags from IT departments. Finally, when you pair WSL2 with the preloaded data science software stack offered by HP, you get a really strong solution for data science. Okay, so how does it perform? WSL2, on like its predecessor WSL1 runs a real Linux kernel. This means that Linux commands work natively. I personally think that WSL2 is a huge upgrade to WSL1. And honestly, I, I really felt pretty limited with the first version, but I think Windows did right with WSL2. The first difference you'll notice is the faster IO performance. That means using pip or git commands will be way faster. We're talking two to five times faster than WSL1. And if we're looking at WSL2 compared to a bare metal Linux install, it's about a uh, 10% virtualization tax, right? And so it's super comparable build times and compile times and, you know, AI training times, etc. The most important thing for data scientists between WSL1 and WSL2 is that WSL2 supports GPUs. So you can do your deep learning, you can do all these things. That was a major limitation of WSL1. If we're looking at data science tasks, they appear virtually identical uh, between a clean Linux install and WSL2 based on the testing that ZBHP has been doing. If you're familiar with my content, you know how much I care about deep work and efficiency. The largest personal benefit that I found with WSL2 is that it massively limits context switching for me. I love my workstation that runs Linux and I still use it to train models. However, remoting in to do like very basic work that I wish I could do on my laptop was a lot of cognitive overhead. I would disrupt my workflow and I'd have to refocus. WSL2 lets me kind of seamlessly switch between related tasks and have everything under one hood. Essentially, it unlocks the ability to have the end-to-end -end workflow all while staying on a Windows machine, which is pretty cool. 
To be clear, this probably saves me a little over an hour a day. I honestly lose a lot of focus when I have to like type in another password. There's like a little just glitchiness between the virtual machine instances. I don't know, there's just like some like weird feeling about it. And maybe I'm being a little bit spoiled, but to me that that is a meaningful difference and I'm always looking for areas to kind of trim out uh, in my life. So I switched to using Linux primarily for data science about a year ago. And I feel like I have access to more tools with Linux. For those who are Windows loyalists or scared to go all the way making a switch to Linux, I think that WSL2 offers you a great option to experiment. You don't have to have FOMO about missing out on the latest or most advanced data science tools from NVIDIA or other uh, cutting edge uh, libraries out there. I hope this video helped you to better understand WSL2 and how it can fit into your own workflow. I've included details on how to install it in the description below. I hope you find as much value in this new tool as I have and let me know in the comment section how WSL2 might help you with your workflow. If you enjoyed the video, please shoot me a like for the algorithm. And if you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe and turn on notifications. I also wanted to thank Z by HP for sponsoring this video and providing me with their hardware to test their products and solutions so I could talk to you from my own experience. Until next time, good luck on your data science journey.